all those are, but that's cute. <laughs> Blueberry plants, citrus trees. We are arriving. A natural farm. Been here before, right? No, you have not. This is my first time. So basically, layout wise, so this is kind of our sample um, learning area. This was put in by some of my students, um, and then they oh, they started about five years ago, uh, and then some of my students put this in. Wow. And then we've got some of the larger tropicals, some small tropicals, and then the shade house uh, on the side. Um, so basically, my background, uh, I'm Chris, by the way, um, is I have a degree in permaculture design. Uh, and so I do teach classes on permaculture, and I have a background in allopathic medicine and herbology as well. Um, so I'm a super big nerd, so I love plants, love, love to it. eat from the earth, and love, love to eat from the ground. That's um, what we're all about. And so when I, I lived in Kansas City for about 15 years, and so at our private school, we had 18 and a half acres that we transitioned from edible or from non-edible ornamentals into edible landscape. So Fantastic. basically the kids could go outside, pick and eat their lunches. We provide salad dressing Isn't and then the kids can thing? just build their salad and go to town. So we had chickens and quail and goats and rabbits and all that sort of thing. Oh um, and so we had kindergartners that would go collect eggs in the morning. And oh then the gosh. high schoolers would check out the mycorrhizal fungi and the compost. And gosh. so it was a full, you know, I've K through 12 these, learning. I've seen these shows on, you know, different gardening shows yeah. or HDTV where they've done those programs with yeah. the kids. And it's fantastic to it's see. It's amazing. It gives them hands-on experience with things that are life-giving. Yeah. So they're learning math and they're learning science and biology. You know, and an animal dies, so instead of dissecting a frog, they're opening up a chicken to find out why did this chicken pass away? Right. What was going on inside? Mm -hmm. You know, and so they're learning real life hands-on stuff and they're getting to know their food. Right. You know, and appreciate the tomato and the chicken and the quail eggs. Absolutely. You know? and so it's just a beautiful, you know, well-rounded system. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and start in the okay. food forest um, in here. So one of the things that we specialize in with the farm is just teaching people practically that you can transform your landscape into edible abundance, both in a very naturalistic Hobbiton style, yes. or you can go really high end like the villages, mm -hmm. you know, and it can look very decorative, very high tech, mm -hmm. uh, or very, um, you know, high end. High end, but, right. You know, the, the stylistically, there's and a have, lot of and, and have, like, it's beneficial now, it's beautiful, it's beautiful, it's not, it's, it's lower maintenance than all these ornamental plants. Yep that yeah. are not necessarily indigenous. Um. And practically, if you have kids, if you have family members, you know, to be able to go outside in your backyard and just pick and eat any mm -hmm. time of the year, mm -hmm. you know, you're winning at life. Absolutely. If you can go out in your backyard and pick a peach, and you know, you're of winning. And Chris, so are a lot of the plants here, like Florida indigenous native plants? Some of them are. That's a good how, question. Yeah, so how is About that? half and half. So we only sell things that grow well in our zone. Okay. But Florida zone, you know, up in Gainesville, they could get frost. Yeah. And then you go down to the Keys and it's totally yes, different. It is. You know, there's, there's, I think, what, four or five zones here. Yeah, Florida. which is really a unique <laughs> scenario. It so is. we do sell things like jackfruit that really are better down in the Florida Keys. Yeah. But we also sell peaches and apples and plums that do better up in Gainesville. Exactly. You know, so there's a really broad range. Some of the things that we brought in are not native but we don't sell things that are invasive okay. so all of the things that we have um, are under the testing of like University of Florida so they're not going to be you know invasive in our yards and that sort of thing um, so nothing's going to be invasive okay. um, so it's going to be Fantastic. super easy so we'll kind of walk through um, this area here is kind of taking a little bit of a break we went through and we pruned some things pretty heavy basically what you'll see is there's seven layers to our food forest system from top story trees mm -hmm. all the way down to ground covers and the rhizome layer you root system um, and basically what we do with a food forest is we plant and design the way nature would naturally have succession but we do it in three to five years where nature would take a hundred years to be able to do that so instead of letting the succession of species go over decades 
we plant it accordingly to how it would, you know, a, work in nature. Yeah, like a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. The, you know, the um, I've read a lot on how the Native American Indians had um, did a lot of their farming, and they did it that oh, way. Yeah. It was symbiotic. They did what was it? The corn, and then the corn, and then underneath that they did. Yep, um, the Three Sisters the, Guild. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Lakota. I stayed on a Native American sanctuary last year, and they do corn climbing beans that go up the corn right. and the beans release nitrogen into the soil exactly squash because it provides shade and then they do a nasturtium mm -hmm. because it uh, is an insectary plant so. yeah and one thing that i've learned in doing a lot of my own you know edible garden and such yeah. is that plants like other plants yeah. They do better when they're actually, ha I call them friends, they have yeah. friends. Yeah. If you if you leave a plant and hope that it's just going to take over, give it some friends if it's not doing well. And yeah. a lot of plants help each other just like we were speaking about Absolutely. and they feed each other with nitrogen or you know different yep. types of nutrients. And so if you just know a little bit about that, then you can have just a Absolutely. flourishing, beautiful yep. uh, garden that's kind of like working yeah. with each other. And you can think about it like how, how we would make friends with someone is that plants think similarly. So when you choose plant friends, you wanna think, are their roots gonna be competing against one another? Exactly. Are they gonna require the same nutrients at the same time? Mm -hmm. Does one release a nutrient that the other one is gonna bring up? Mm -hmm. Is one gonna provide shade to help the other one grow? Mm -hmm. So you wanna provide an atmosphere to where they can really thrive and one symbiotically. Thing, one thing in Florida that I have found is really good to do is plant plants that get rid of bugs around yeah. your other plants one of those that Huge. i know of is rosemary yeah. so and i've got a lot of herbs are really good yeah at keeping bugs keeping the away. bad bugs away bring in the, the good, good bugs. bugs yeah the exactly lady bugs exactly. are the ones yep. you want and in my garden we yeah. see a lot of ladybugs yeah. you know we've got a lot of good things because if they have friends that take care of each other yeah. and the, i've got a lot of rosemary and all kinds of you know plants like that yeah. that kind of keep the bugs away so. have you tried nasturtium nasturtium's fantastic i i, I think i planted some mm -hmm. And and it might have died. Okay. But yes, I need to get more. That's into one of that. my favorites. Okay. It's the flowers taste like radishes, mm. and the the plant will bring in the braconid wasp mm. that's going to attack tomato hornworms and aphids and that and sort those of thing. Are the worst. And they bring in all the good insects. That's you know, fantastic. so fantastic. Yeah, it's a good yes. one. Yes, yes, good point. Yeah. Nasturtium. Well, let's Love go through that. some of these. So some of the ones that I really like, we can actually start with this one. Okay. Uh, this is called Moringa. Mm -hmm. um, so Moringa, they call it the tree of life. And you can see on, around the food forest, we have these little signs, companion plants. These are basically the friends. So the friends, the friends. <laughs> and the, of the Moringa are gonna be your nasturtiums and marigold and chives and that sort of thing. Yeah. Moringa uh, is indigenous to Africa. Um, so most of them are like Madagascar, you know, kind of area. Oh, they look but like it. This, they call it the tree of life because every part of the plant is edible, medicinal, and useful. Oh. Um, the leaves, you can go ahead and take some off. You can eat fresh, uh, dried as a, as a powder. It has all nine amino acids, has a little bit of a horseradishy taste, has all nine amino acids. I put them in my eggs in the morning, literally just take it like this, strip the leaves off, drop them in my just eggs, like an and herb. just fry mm. them up. Yep. All nine amino acids, really good protein source. You know what they kind of remind me of? What's that? Did you ever eat the little clovers on the ground? Wood sorrel, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, they do have a very a very similar, similar taste. Mm -hmm. Really yummy. I do them like as a dry them, put them in a powder, mm. and then add them in smoothies and mm. you know, that very sort of thing. Very cool, Stores I love forever. that. Um, you know I'm gonna be, I already called my son to get bring the truck so I could buy some plants today. Oh, did this you? is a yeah. beautiful. Moringa is one of my It's already started off with a beautiful plant for me. Yeah, so. this one, that one is fun, fun. Uh, peach trees are good Orlando and North. The ones that we have are Tropic Beauty, Tropic Snow, and Florida Prince. Uh, these have less cooling hours, so you can grow them in Florida. Okay. So they're uh, bred by the University of Florida. Um, and then some of the friends of those are gonna be your beans, um, nasturtium mints, is good nasturtium. for everything. Yeah, that one's good for anything. What is yarrow, Chris? Yarrow is a short growing wildflower. The leaves are very soft, feathery, almost fern-like. Okay. Uh, it's really good for women's issues of all kinds. Wow. So whether it's bleeding problems, menopause, uh, cramping. It's also good for fevers. You can do it as a tea, fresh or dried. Wow. You can also do it as a tincture where you soak it in mm -hmm. vodka for 30 to 90 days, strain it out, and then take a few drops under your tongue. So wow. really, really yummy. I love that. Great pollinator. And yarrow is great because yarrow attracts ladybugs. I love that. So, yeah, really fun. This one is a weed in Florida, but it is probably Florida's 
unsung hero. It's called Biden's Elba or Biden's way. Pilosa. Uh, and this one back in the Civil War era was used as a replacement for penicillin because it's antiviral, <gasps> antibacterial, So let me get this right. It's this one, right? The yep. flowering? Yep. I have these everywhere. You do. Yep. And this is one of the best uh, pollinators in the entire state of Florida. Fritillary butterflies go bonkers over them. The best leaves that are going to be the most nutritious are the newer ones at the top like this. And you can literally just chop them up, throw them in eggs, throw them in soups and stews. If you do it as a tea, just soak them in water seven to ten minutes. Tastes just like a light white tea or a, a green tea. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very light, no caffeine. Mm -hmm. uh, but then if you want to use it um, topically in the Civil War era on a wound, they would grind it up into a poultice and then pack it into wounds to prevent gangrene, infections, and that sort of thing as well. Wow. So this is Biden's Alba and Biden's Pilosa. They're technically two different species, but they both have the same medicinal properties. So it's like what I use my tea tree oil for, but I don't have to go to Australia Absolutely. for it. Absolutely. This, yep. is, this is it. Yep. Get yep. out. Fantastic, oh. and it tastes way better in tea than in tea tree. Wow, yeah, you're right. You're <laughs> way, tea tree. way better, Ew. way, way better. So this is like a Florida tea tree. Get out! It is. I love it, and this. It's, it's everywhere. I mean, if you it want to is. eat the weeds, it is everywhere. Very, very high nutrients. Uh, this one is really good in salads. Last week, I did a cranberry hibiscus steak and blue cheese salad. Get out. Mm. Are you going to cook straight. for us, too? I, I, I do mean, love like, cooking. I do love oh cooking. Oh my gosh, we'll come and do... Show. Yeah. Chris has to cook mm. stuff from here for a, a show. Yeah, oh, that'd show. be awesome. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Could do that little Go ahead. Try it. Okay. Mm -hmm. What'd you think? Did you try it? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> it tastes just like cranberries. Mm. What the freak? Oh, my God. Isn't it good? Nuts? What? It does taste like cranberry. It does. <laughs> what the heck? Really Astaxanthins. Anti oh, antioxidants. So much nutrients out of this. It does get a pretty it's little so pink flower beautiful. on it, but just a really pretty, great understory. Grows in sun or park shade. Mm -hmm. And just to think, like, I'm like I'm glad I you can have you. all of this. I cute and get rid of Every yep. nothing plant yep. that the deer eats. Yep. They're not <laughs> yep. doing anything. A yet. lot of people go buy those the regular hibiscus, the flowering hibiscus. If you can grow that, <laughs> this will go in that spot. Yeah. Like that's exactly it, what we're exactly. Grow there. Yep. Yep. This tree here is tamarind. Make tamarind paste yeah. um, out of the, the seeds of them. Tamarind. This is probably one of my favorite trees that we have. Now we cleared it out because we made jam couple Mulberry. Of this is the dwarf yes. ever bearing mulberry. And I kid you not, it will bear fruit year round. I mean, even Chris, the week before Christmas, I was picking berries, eating them. They taste like a blackberry but sweeter and not seedy. Mm. Um, so really, really good. The leaves, when they're younger, you can use as a tea that has antioxidant properties mm. and is uh, soothing. You mentioned the herbs under the trees. So we have rosemary. Yeah. Beautiful. Ooh, beautiful it's rosemary. so nice to just so pull it. And... Smell it. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. So, so good. It is. I That's like to take so the, the longer branches and then you use it with skewers to just do like kebabs. Oh, good you know? idea. Yeah. Oh, wow. Flavor the kebabs I all the way I love that idea. Mm. That just that makes sense. It yeah. does. Like yeah. from what we use that instead. Is actually yep. thinking more like a oh. native, like human being, that you yeah. come from an area, you don't have a pantry, and you go, hey, we don't have wooden skewers, but we've got these. Well, we've got this, and, and this it's adding flavor. flavor. It's doing the same exact thing. Yes. yes. That's amazing. And that's yep. the whole idea, is just trying to be in, in in tune with your inner native human. Exactly. Happy buddy. And, yep. and in tune with your area that you that you plan to live in. Uh, this guy's avocado. name is Joey. Um, <laughs> and so they're a little bit smaller Joey. avocado fruits. But I'll take you all the way down the line here. And we've got, I mean, 15 or 20 just down this line. Uh, that you, it's kind of like, and a lot of people don't that like. think that avocados do <laughs> oh, well God. here because they come from California, but they I, actually do. They really do. Wasn't that amazing? Oh my goodness, that was so fun learning about permaculture and food forests and native Florida plants. I hope it's inspired you to take a look at your garden and maybe get rid of some of your ornamentals and look for native and maybe even other plants that are fruiting and beneficial that do well in your area and replace them in your garden. Today, I'm gonna plant the gift that a natural farm gave us. This is rare black turmeric. And what a treat, so good for you. I love turmeric. I've never heard of black turmeric. I didn't know it existed. And now I get to plant it in my garden. So I hope that you guys follow along. We've got 
so many more shows to come up. I think there's three more shows coming up for a total of four. Learn with us all of the cool facts about permaculture and food forests that we learn at a natural farm right here in Florida. We'll see you guys. Oh, oh, oh.